In the heart of the residential area of Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, stands a building that has served this community for almost 100 years. The Robert J. Quirk Cultural Center is a community and arts center. It started its life in 1930 as Grant School. By the 1970s, declining enrollment closed several schools in the area, including Grant. Then in 1986, the three-story building was dedicated as Quirk Cultural Center, a place where residents of all ages could gather and learn the arts of ceramic, woodworking, ballet, theater, and a host of other activities. Quirk has proudly served the area in that capacity ever since. But this building not only serves the needs of the community today, it also seems to serve the spirits of the past as well. Employees and volunteers at the center have reported strange occurrences within the walls of this building. Doors closing on their own, elevators running when the building is empty, and sounds of children running the empty halls. Could it be that the spirits of the children and the faculty still reside here? I just started with this position in July and when I was first within the first couple of days I was talking to a couple of the employees here and they were just casually mentioning that oh yes by the way it's haunted. Many employees that have had different experiences and some similar experiences. The creepy crawly feelings, right? Where you're, um, all of a sudden your hair stands up on end. The elevator, when once everyone is gone, the elevator will come down and the doors will open. During COVID, when it was shut down, there'd only be two people in the building. There are children running up and down the second, third floors, because it sounds like there's about four or five kids that run up and down the hallways. The building was built in 1930. It was a school building, and then eventually was turned into the cultural center that it is today. So. Laura reached out to Team Spectre for help in proving the existence of spirits at Quirk. We have met up with Team Spectre on several occasions, including at the Canton Palace Theater, where spirits have roamed for decades. I started looking to see if there are any local groups that did ghost hunting and just so I could get some guidance because I wanted this to be an actual ghost hunt. I saw Joe's and Team Spectre and sent them an email. They're the only ones I reached out to because when he responded back, he was right in line with everything I was thinking because he said, if you're looking for basically any hocus pocus or any, he goes, we're not your people. And I'm like, that's not what I want. Like I'm, I'm bringing cookies and water and there's no decorations, right? I don't want anything. I want it all to, just to be an actual ghost hunting experience and communicating with the spirits in the building and not have anything extra. So I didn't contact anybody else. They just seem like a really good group from the get go. We came in, came in and did a walk around and I felt enough things in here including several things in the theater of, of people being there either to watch or trying to get your attention that they were actually using the theater stage that I said okay we can do something because there are actually residual items here. There is a women's restroom off the gymnasium. When we were walking around doing a feel of things I was told by one of the other investigators I'm not going to go in there. There's something in there that doesn't want us in there so being the idiot that I am, I charged on in. Walked in, got halfway through the room, knew that somebody was really defending the place. It was an adult. Stopped, said, okay, no problem. I'll head back out. I get it. This is your territory. So I walk back out. As I'm leaving, there are racks of chairs stored back there. One of the chairs banged against one of the other chairs hard enough that it would have been somebody pushing it. And of course, it's on a rack. So somebody pushed a chair to bang it, and it was their hey, I won victory. So those types of things happened before we ever did a, a basic investigation. So I knew we had some stuff. With Team Spectre's validation of residual spirits in the building, Laura decided to host a community event at the center called Haunted Quirk Ghost Hunt, another avenue for the center to further service the community. The event quickly sold out. Having this open to the community where they can um they can come and experience it. And you know, part of it, I, when I posted and I told them, I even reminded them when I emailed everybody this week, reminding them of you know when the doors open and everything, if they have their own equipment, bring it, right? So I think it would be great to at least have once a year um, this type of event and open it up for this type, because we have, we have a lot of different programs here, but nothing like this. Hundreds of students and faculty passed through these doors when the building was known as Grant School. 
Could it be that some of these souls remained here after death? All right, the last time I was here, um, it was upstairs, third floor boys' uh, bathroom. There's a like, utility closet um, behind it. And went up there, and there's definitely uh, something up there. So we did a spirit box and found out that he was a music teacher, but he, he was fired because he did something that disgraced him, and he was really upset about it. He was upset with himself and that he lost a job. I don't know exactly what happened to him, but he ended up there in the, in the crawl space behind the boy's bathroom. I went into the space, and he went away from me, but then I could actually see him coming toward me. He went about halfway into the space toward me, and then he stopped, and then he backed away. Um, he's not aggressive. He's just upset. He wants to be left alone. I got a sense of more that he's very disappointed in himself, but that's where he is. So there is a um, there is a documented newspaper evidence of I don't remember when uh, early on in the history of Grant School where there was an eight year old boy who missed the bus home and he lived on the other side of the Cuyahoga River so he walked home he walked this way down to Highbridge Street and if you followed back then followed Highbridge Street it was called Highbridge Street because there was a high bridge that crossed the river to okay eastern side of the falls and there's railroad tracks and on his way home he got hit by a train and killed. So, you know, we're just wondering if maybe, maybe anybody has a sense of whether or not he is here or not. The Cuyahoga Falls Historical Society and Museum uncovered some incredible information about a Grant School student that sadly lost his life. On a cold March day in 1943, eight-year-old Jack Buddy Forshe missed the bus home. Buddy had a mile walk home in the blustery weather, which might have been the reason he didn't see the train that hit him. Buddy was about to cross the double mainline B&O railroad tracks at the Broad Street crossings. He stopped on the west tracks to watch a northbound train riding the east tracks. While standing there, a southbound train riding on the west track hit him, hurling him 50 feet. Jack, Buddy Forshe, died on impact, and his family, teachers, and classmates were left to pick up the pieces of their lives and carry on. With a quick introduction and instruction from the Quirk staff and Team Spectre, event participants were split up into groups to get the lay of the land and learn about the technology they can use on their hunt. Then it was time for Lights Out as the ghost hunt began. Several rooms in the building are said to be haunted, but a few of the rooms are ripe with activity. The first, and perhaps the most active, is the boardroom. It was clear that this room had several spirits attached, including a spirit who was very particular about a certain chair in the room. He is an older gentleman, kind of balding, round face. He's kind of not heavy set, but um, he's kind of like got the sideburns, like 70s kind of sideburns. Okay. Does he um, know, does, does he expect this place to be a, a boardroom or is he here I for a different reason? What I used to get was that he would come here and listen to the boardroom, like to the, the, the goings on, but he likes that chair. That's yeah. why I put it over there. That's good. And the last time he was there, he was turning on and off that flashlight and right. like it was nobody's that. business. Does he want to communicate? Or he does. does is he like, here? like people tried to ask, can I go sit in your chair and the flash, turn the flashlight off if you don't want to. I'd get up to go walk. Boom, flashlight would go off. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it, we were like, thank you. Can you turn it back on? He'd turn it back on. Like he'd only answer certain questions. Like I'm already getting goosebumps about it. D from Team Spectre started the boardroom hunt with the SLS camera. Structured light sensor cameras project invisible infrared laser grids to map out human forms on living beings. These images sometimes appear where no living humans are and can be an indication of spirit interaction. But there's always said there's that they didn't have to people popping up I mean, here like and I there. Mm -hmm. here, but they didn't have to so I keep trying to move it around. Them. Obviously, it's so picking up know. those I don't guys. Know if she's here or what, but. When, but um, they, the first I time think they came, which was just this chair, ball, there's show, something right there. Oh, I see, see it, yeah. That, so it looks like yeah, so it's smaller, yeah, obviously. it does look pretty small, huh? Yeah, Even though it's in a, it seems like it's in a chair. It looks like, it looks like it's standing on the chair. Oh. Yeah. 
Wait, right next to... Yeah, Beth. Beth. Yep. Yeah, behind you. This way? Yeah. Right there. So, go ahead and try to interact with, like, the back of the chair or the... Okay. I have nothing in my hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> okay, I only have a, my watch on, which... It's not going to do anything. Okay. No. Anything? Nope, just hang in there. Okay. You can go a little lower. Oh, uh, it reached out to you for yep. a second. It did? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Like right around here? Yep. Uh, it's leaning over his chair. <laughs> yeah, don't touch my arm. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of dropped its shoulder like to get away from you. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of times we put things on the chairs, especially in the Canton Palace when they're, we know that there's kids through there. Yeah. We put candy on the chairs mm -hmm. and kind of try to entice them to come out. So if I do this, will it lean towards me? It yeah. just did. Okay. So a lot of times we do, we try to debunk that that's mapping the chair by it interacting with her. Like, you know, like it, if it's just mapping the chair, it's not going to be interacting in different ways. Does it care? It's that touching I... your it's hand it. on the opposite side. Okay. Often the easiest way for a spirit to communicate with the living is by interacting with EMF detectors. The spirits in the boardroom were eager to communicate this way. It's important to note that EMF detectors are very sensitive to electrical equipment, including electrical outlets. So before real communication can be validated, time is spent verifying the location of those items and eliminating the possibility of electrical contamination. It's staying on. All right, big man. Are you guys picking anything up over there? Somewhere in that corner, whatever it is. So I usually do go in a box. And then move forward to make sure. Okay. Now the K2 is going off. So I'm wondering if there's something electrical over here. Because the more Probably, I get right? here, I just started up over here again. Yeah, and it's over here. You said your K2 is yeah, going to K2. It's got to be, right? There's got to be something. Yeah. After mapping out the locations of electrical sources, it seems the spirits were too eager to communicate, and they quickly drained Little John's fully charged camera battery. And then I put it next to the wall where the electricity is, and there's nothing there. Okay. There's nothing baseline. No. Like, here's a, a, a plug. Outlet, right? That would be where the wire is. Yeah. Yep. Nothing down here. Nothing on the floor. <laughs> My battery's gonna die. <laughs> I just got a notification of it. It's a party in here. <laughs> the batter My battery's getting drained right His now. His battery's dying. Un unreal. Is Stop messing with my stuff, man. Like, Every one of these yeah, I do, I lose a battery. It's over Come here on. because this is going up to three. It drained it? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, it drained it. You're $100? Yeah. 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 Here it goes. Put some dollars in the donation box. That is so funny. All right. I'll get the other one out. Yeah, I had a battery get just ripped. Did so, you? Already. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, I saw it go from, I saw it go. 30 and then it jumped it did it went like 20 15 1 done oh my God. <laughs> lights up on my screen like hey your battery's done okay yeah Thanks. that's good <laughs> go ahead and turn the red light off for me not everybody's watching it well we see you okay where else do you guys want to be there you go Thank you. Yeah, it just went right off. Yeah. If I stand over here, it's off. Nothing. 
Are you the gentleman that sits in the chair? Hit the red light for yes. Yeah. Are you the music teacher? I was picking up something over here earlier. I know. There's. Are you not the music teacher? I was in here Thank before you. I said I was getting cold. You're not the yeah, music teacher. Going off yeah. And I was sitting See, right here. And I stand over Did here. you go to school here? Cold. Turn it on for yes. Okay. okay. It's just following you. I know. Well, you know. Did you work here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here on yes. the window no. sill. <laughs> Turn it on for yes. Put it over here on the window sill, though. Take it as well. Okay. Did you go to school here? Thank you. It went down, but not on. Yeah. Did you graduate from this school? Did you go to the bigger school? Right here. Did you move away? Are you going to follow Melissa? Did you pass away? You've been following me for a while. You know what? Thank you. what it is. I think it wants to be at the head of after establishing a baseline, Dee asked a series of questions and received what could be considered intelligent responses. Then she asked, did you pass away? At that moment, we began to think maybe we were connecting with the spirit of Buddy Forshee, but Dee dug deeper. Can you tell me how old you were when you passed away? Were you less than five years old? Were you less than 10 years old? Were you less than 15 years old? Thank you. Were you 14? Were you 13? Were you 12 years old? Were you 11? Were you 10? Thank you. Are you a boy? Are you a girl? Thank you. Maybe we should start dowsing on this. Maybe. These are legit answers. They are. They are. They are. Absolutely. 10 year old girl who passed away. She happy? Happy? Are you happy being here with us right now? Thank you. We like talking to you. Are there adults here with you? Yeah. Like I was saying, like if they've never been communicated with and now they can hit a button and make it. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> On the first floor of the center is a storage room that has a lot of energy. This was the same room Joe spoke about earlier. Little John had a similar experience and was quick to share his aversion to the area. So of course, Megan and I had to see it for ourselves. So, it's all about the, uh, it's all about the gymnasium. There is a, uh, there's a closet in the gymnasium that is that the one that's downstairs? Yes. I'm good. I'm all right. You, you, like, I'm all right. Like, you're not going? Nope. <laughs> no, it's a little spooky. I don't know. It's not, it, it's, uh, yeah, elephant on your shoulders kind of thing. That's you know. weird. Really? It feels real heavy. I don't like it. Okay. So, I have to go to the gymnasium? Yeah, I mean, you know. Well, we've already had stuff going on down there, too. Lights flickering on and off. We had a whole, a whole light in one of those hallways just turn off. There is nobody who turned it off. I went over. They're not auto lights. There's a switch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so have fun. I can't see. I'm gonna go upstairs. Oh, you know what? Actually, no. I'm on this way. So you want to? Uh, where do you want to go? You want to go down to that room you were talking about? We can, yeah. See if we can get anything. Let's go. <laughs> this is the one. Oh yeah, I totally. Oh, I feel that. Okay, so 
Uh, Joe from Team Spectre. Whew, really? Yeah. Joe from Team Spectre was telling us about this room and was telling us about an entity that was in this room. And he was telling us about the stacked chairs. So Joe was in this room and he got about a halfway into the room and the entity that is in here basically backed him out of the room. The closer I get to these chairs, the higher the EMF gets. You see how it's in, almost in the red? Back away. Yeah, look at that. Go back in. Okay, so let's see if we can debunk that. Okay. Step aside. Yeah, is there anything now, there's over there's a sump here? pump here. Yeah, there is. So there's electrical conduit here, but it's not spiking around that conduit. It's not. Come over here by the chairs again. It's still going up. Come over here. Oh. Nope, it's going down. Go back over. It's right here. What else is there? Is there something else behind here? Oop. Don't fall in there. You'll, you'll regret it. I don't see anything. Something above? How That's old all... are you? What are you saying? How old are you? How old are you? I'm 28. Know. Come back over here by the chairs. I'm an old lady. Yeah. So there's definitely some sort of... Uh, electromagnetic activity right here. That's really crazy. Yeah. Let's try something. Okay. Why don't you go out of the room? Okay. I'm going to follow you. Okay, how is it now? It's gone down. Okay, turn around and come back over here. Let me see your screen. Okay, stay let's go ahead. What is oh, stay, stay with, with me. me. Oh boy. Okay, let's go in. Nice and easy, nice and slow. I want to see how things progress. It's going up. That's amazing. Right here. Again, come down here by the electrical. Let's see what happens. It's going down. Mm -hmm. Okay, back up. But I come over here. It's spiking. It spikes. There's nothing above us. Nothing below Stay. us. Stay. Okay, we'll play that game. What? Uh, what is your name? Can you tell us your name? What is your name? He repeated the question back to you. My name is John. My what name is, is your Megan. Name? What is your name? Do you remember your name? Look. Look where? Okay, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna turn around and look. To your left. To your left. Over here. Over here. It's talking loud. We're looking. There's almost no EMF happening now. Right. It's because I moved it from there. Now it's over here again. That's amazing. Why around that chair? Right, why that chair? Are you, are you sitting in the chair? 15. Are you, at, are you in school? Is this where you went to school? Bite. Bite. <laughs> okay. Was this your lunch chair? A good question. Because he said bite, and I'm like, we're in an auditorium. This could have been the lunchroom. It's, it's also the cafeteria, right? Yeah. Is this where you would eat lunch? You stay there. Okay. Don't come in. Don't come in. Well, we're already in. Would you like us to leave? Okay, well, we're going to leave right now because we have other places we need to look at. Um, so we're going to start walking away if that's okay with you. 
A long time ago. A long time ago. Thank you for talking to us. Is it okay if we come back and see you sometime? Okay. I know it's it's difficult sometimes to communicate, so we're gonna go ahead and go, but we'll be back hopefully sometime, okay? He won't leave. He won't leave. Yeah, I'm gonna leave. I'll see ya. <laughs> he won't leave. Originally, we thought the spirit was referring to me, but we would soon learn that wasn't the case. Toward the end of the evening, all groups gathered on the third floor to connect with the spirits in an ancient form of ghost communication known as table tipping. Table tipping is a form of psychic phenomena in which a table shakes, rotates, tilts, or rises completely off the ground by the mere contact of the fingertips of a group of individuals. So what I tell everybody to do whenever we do this is, is just the good old-fashioned table tipping stuff. We're going to start out with our hands on top of the table. No thumbs underneath the edge of the table or anything like that. We're just going to be about it. What we're going to do now, we're all going to just kind of relax a little bit. We're going to try to just focus on what we're doing here in the room. Try to tune everything else out. Just relax as much as you can. And now we're going to use the table instead of dowsing rods to ask spirits to talk to us. We're going to ask them if there's any spirits here if you come to the table and you use what combined energies here without stepping into anybody to move the table to let us know that you're here. And what we're going to look for is a strong movement from you. And there's plenty of energy here. So we want strong movements to let us know what's here. What I want to know is are we talking to a male spirit? No. Are we talking to a female spirit? Yes. Is this an adult? Yes. Okay. Did you work here? Yes. I'm saying that for all of you because you can't mm -hmm. feel it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, if you guys want to come around Anybody want to come up and join, feel it? To it. Um, did you live near here? Yes. Did you retire from this school? No. No. Did you work your whole career here? No. Did you retire from another school? Yes. How, uh, let's try to figure out how long you worked here. Did you work here 10 years? Yes. Was it more than 10 years? Yes. Was it as long as 20 years? Mm. Was it as long as 15 years? Yes. How about 16? Was it as long as 16? Yes. How about 17 years? No. And we know this wasn't the end of their career because they did not respect. Yes. Were you a teacher here? Yes. I'd like to know what grade you taught. So I'm going to go through each one. Can you shake the table? Did you teach kindergarten? No. Did you teach first grade? No. Did you teach second grade? Yes. Wow. Do you know that I taught second grade for seven years and I loved that age? Yes. Did you teach any other grades? Oh yeah, they like to move teachers around, don't they? <laughs> yes. Did you teach third grade as well? Yes. I taught third grade too. Fourth. No. no. Okay. Um, did you have a? Did you specialize in something while you were teaching here? No. 
I bet you had to teach all the subjects, is that right? Yes. Do you still teach the students here at the school? Yes. If anybody wants to come feel the table, it's not moving a great deal, but it's shaking. Yes, it is pretty cool. Feel free to come. I can hear it I can hear it too. in the headphones. Yeah, I can hear it. We really appreciate you communicating <laughs> with us. Thank you. Yes. Do you know Steve? Have you seen Sarah and her brother? Yes. Do you watch out for them? Yes. Can you help Sarah know that she's dead? Yes. Can you come and go? No. Do you choose to stay here? Yes. Do you feel like you still have a job to do here at the school? Definitely. Yes. Do the children love you? Yes. Is there anyone else in the room with us? No. Do you miss your family? It's still going. Very much. Wow. It's just still going. Can you go and see them? No. Do you choose not to see them? No. Are you unable to see them? Did you have children of your own? Oh, yes. Do you like it when people come and talk to you? Okay. Yes. Can you guys hear that? Yeah. We can see it. You can see it? Yes. <laughs> okay, please feel free to come put your hands on the table if you want to feel it. Do you wish to move on from here? Do you think we might be able to help you? Okay. So you would like our help? Oh, you guys can hear it, right? Yeah. Yes. Do you want to be able to leave and go see your family? Yes. Is there one child that you're staying to protect? Are there two children you're staying to protect? Are you staying to protect them all? That's a lot of is, is there somebody here who scares the children? Is this person downstairs in the gymnasium? negative person hiding in the dark space. Oh my goodness, that is so nice of you to stay and to help the children. That's what teachers do. Yeah, even though you want to leave and go on and see your family. Is that true? Can this, ideas. Can this person, is this person hiding in the dark space a female? It is at this point where the spirit is asked if what's hiding in the dark space is a male. Almost immediately after, Megan asks a question. You can hear her say, is it, 
we have muted the rest of her question because it is very specific, and the result was tremendous. Without further verification, we have decided it should not be aired at this time. Is this person hiding in the dark space a male? Is it For many people in the room and at the table, tonight's table tipping was an extremely powerful event. Megan was particularly affected and she could feel the spirit's sorrow. There are some secrets within the walls of Quirk that need to stay secret for now. Did you have your album song? Yeah. 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 No, oh, sweet. It's okay. A little, not, not like normal. Were you getting anything? Were you? Time I just over yeah, <laughs> Today, Court Cultural Center continues to proudly serve the Cuyahoga Falls community, but it may also serve those who have passed on. I invite you to find out for yourself in the fall of 2024, when the center plans to host another haunted Quirk ghost hunt. You never know. With the amount of activity present in this building, you might become a believer yourself. Thank you for watching, folks. We'll see you next time as we explore more curious history. Take care.